Action. Ah! Action. <clears throat> Hi everybody, my name is Courtney. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm also known as the Cheese Gal. It's actually what you probably know me as more so than anything else. It's cheese, cheese and martinis. Delicious. I am so excited to welcome you into my own space. I've been wanting to launch this YouTube series for such a long time and the day is finally here. So I figured I had to pay homage to my start, to my name, to all of it. We're making a cheese board today. Here's the thing, cheese boards, as you know them, especially on social media, they look layered and elaborate and honestly a bit intimidating, but truly when you break it down into steps, not at all. So I'm gonna show you my process. You can kind of take this and run with it. The whole point here is to make delicious food, and in this case, cheeses and meats and everything fabulous, make it look pretty. So here we go, without further ado, we are making our first cheese gal cheese board on this YouTube channel. I think we should just get right into it, right? We're gonna cut cheeses. This is kind of sometimes uh, where people get stuck, right? How do you cut this cheese to make it look pretty on this board? Everything I'm gonna be showing you today, it's how can I make this really yummy food look a little bit better than just slap it down on a board. I have four cheeses here today. If you have three or even two, that's totally fine. I like mixing up the textures, um, whether it's different milks. We have hard cheeses, we have semi-hard cheeses. I have a bloomy rind cheese here that's a bit more soft. Change it up because we wanna give our guest some variety. The first thing I wanna show you how to do is how to cut the cheese. Now, I'm a 12 year old boy when I say that. I can never say it seriously and not chuckle. We're gonna cut the cheese. We're gonna start out with one of the best cheeses you can ever eat, and it's the one that everybody always likes. This is the number one crowd pleaser cheese, aged cheddar. It's one of the most approachable, um, it's very mild obviously, but it has those really delicious cheese crystals that you don't want to crunch, it's, oh, it's fabulous. The thing with this cheese is because it's aged, it is gonna tend to have that like crumbly texture. So I'm gonna show you how to cut this two ways, depending on how your aged cheddar is behaving that day, okay? I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. We're gonna cut it in half first, the first way that I wanna show you how to cut this is into slices. And again, see, we're already crumbling right there. That's okay, go with it. We're just trying to give the board a little bit of texture. So by pre-slicing it, this makes the cheese board and the cheese itself way more uh, inviting for your guests just to, you know, put their hand down, just grab their little slice of cheddar. It also allows you to plate it a little bit more interesting. The next way that I wanna show you how to do this is how to properly crumble your cheddar. Going back to the nature of this cheese is actually very crumbly. Take the tip of your knife, I'm just using a chef's knife here. You do this and twist your wrist. Tip in, twist your wrist. And you get these really pretty little crumbles that we can also just sort of put into a pile. But we're just going with whatever shape they naturally kind of want to break in, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have this beautiful little pile of cheddar crumbles. And next, I'm going to show you how to cut this beautiful um, semi-hard cheese. Now, this shape in particular, you'll see a lot of this with like different goudas. Um, manchego is very similar to the shape. And I'm gonna show you how to cut it just into little triangles. Again, we're gonna go with like the natural shape of this cheese. First, I want you to cut off the ends. These, like the closer to the outside of your cheese that you get, these are just like a little harder. Then, just in a vertical slice, we're gonna go down with our chef's knife. And you get these cute little triangles. Again, allows you to plate this cheese in a more interesting and approachable way so that your cheese is not left on your board with the big old knife in it. One thing that I just mentioned at the top of the segment was choosing different um, milks that gives you different flavor profile. So over here I have um, also a goat's milk bloomy rind. This is one of my favorite cheeses on planet Earth. I actually call this my desert island cheese. If I could choose one cheese for the rest of my life to eat on a desert island, it would be this Humboldt fog. We're just going to cut this in half. Let me show you the inside of this heard the angels sing. There she is, folks. 
It's beautiful. It's not blue cheese, okay? But it's the gateway into funky cheeses without it being overpowering. Kind of like a, a conversation starter cheese. <laughs> really should trademark these. And it's um, just funky enough. Just enough to where people go, have you tried that? I'm like, well, no, but I will now. We're left with our beautiful Brie Wedge. Now, we're gonna leave her as she is. She doesn't need to be um, changed. We, you know, love her personality. Our cheese is cut. We are ready to go. You'll notice I'm using a cutting board today. This is actually one of my favorite um, things to build a board on. You can literally build a board on any flat surface. It doesn't just have to be a proper cheese board. I actually prefer cutting boards. I prefer, uh, I love serving platters, especially when you have like a little bit of a lip. It kind of just keeps all that goodness in. Um, but yeah, again, today, go into your kitchen, grab a cutting board and let's build our cheese board. So we've got our beautiful cheddar crumbles. I'm first going to start with what I call layer one. This is the foundation. We are setting the foundation for the entire board and we're gonna start with the cheese. So I'm gonna sort of just set my crumbles off to one side, okay? And I want to give enough space for all of my cheese so that it can breathe and that, you know, the flavors and the smell aren't gonna like rub off on each other. We need these to stay, you know, individual. So we're gonna place our brie kind of just in this corner where it's easy for people to access with a knife. I think we should do our Humboldt Fog. I feel like it should be opposite of the brie. They're a little similar in style and texture. So I just kind of wanna let them do their own thing. I'm gonna wait to plate these. I have cute little, um, these are actually ice cream dishes, but I like using cute bowls or ramekins also on my board. If I'm using jam or olives or honey, that's what I'm using today. Honey's one of my favorite things to pair with cheese. So delicious. Um, so I'm gonna put my olives right here. Let's do our honey right here. And then let's get to work. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to fan your cheese. So let me think about first where I'm gonna put the ramekins. I kinda of like the idea of putting them a little bit catty corner. I'm gonna take our cheddar and I'm gonna do it into like little fans. What I mean by that is quite literally, I'm gonna be doing this type of movement around, can you see that right here? Around my ramekin. Not only does this make it look a little more interesting, it all goes back to, is this easy for my guest to grab? I also love cutting these little slices like this because it starts to give your plate movement. Now we have our cute little triangular slices and we're gonna do a similar type of fan. It goes just like this. Place one down, one on top, another one on top. Do you see kind of how already we are starting to see? This looks just a little bit more interesting. A little bit of movement, a little bit of a wave here. I'm gonna go back in and judge it. Okay, this really fabulous, delicious honey. Okay, it's rock hard. <laughs> I was gonna do, <laughs> I was gonna do, actually, let's do this. Boom. We're going with it. We are going with it, people. Layer one is complete. Cheeses, this is when you put your bowls. If you have, um, grapes that you're using, this is also a great time to put that down. Anything that's kind of large that we would need to layer on top of, that goes down on this first step. Second step, I like doing crackers next. Um, also, something to keep in mind is if you are working with a board that's not very big, you can always do a cracker plate separately so that you don't have to take up any space for the most, you know, the start of the show, which is the cheese, right? So I have, these uh, fig and olive crisp. And I'm gonna do that fanning technique that I just showed you over here with the cheddar. I'm gonna do it with the crackers. And I wanna make sure that I'm doing the little uh, fanning cracker sections all over the board so that number one, visually, we have some symmetry. And again, it's easy for our guests to graze no matter where they're standing. When it comes to picking your crackers, you wanna go with something that is not too overpowering, something that's gonna really let that cheese shine um, to where it complements the flavor, but doesn't compete. Don't be afraid to change things up. Nothing is too precious. I think that's why I enjoy making boards so much. It's actually pretty cathartic. It's kind of like designing a room, except for you get to eat it. So, okay, next, 
or making prosciutto ribbons. Only mess with it minimally. If you can, keep it in the fridge until right before you're about to plate. I just have pre-sliced prosciutto. I am carefully gonna take this off in the wrapper, like you see, I'm like literally barely gonna mess with this. And then in a accordion-like, fan-like uh, folding motion, I'm just going to do that. Here we go. Again, making delicious food look pretty. We are elevating this charcuterie meat. So again, we're going back into our folds. If you want, you can leave it like this or you can fold it in half again, which is what I'm actually gonna do. We're creating these cute little ribbons right here. So delicious. My favorite bite, by the way, a lot of people ask me what my favorite bite is. Prosciutto, brie, and either fig jam or honey. Oh my God. Beyond. You get the sweet, salty, creamy thing. I've been making cheese boards since I was literally 15 years old. My godmother, her name is Care, um, is just the most amazing, fabulous. She like oozes fabulousness, not in a way that's like pretentious. She just, everything she does, I'm like, teach me that. So I was spending the night at her house one night. I'm 15 years old. She brings out this beautiful cheese and meat board. I had sparkling grape juice and <laughs> she was drinking champagne. And I said, will you teach me how to do this, Care? And she said, okay, a couple of things and have these things in your arsenal. One day when you, you know, have your own apartment or whatever. First of all, always have a chilled bottle of champagne in your fridge in case you have unexpected guests. I was like, okay, smart, noted. And then she said, always have a couple of different like cheeses in your cheese drawer. I think in her case, she had like mozzarella and then she had grapes and crackers and olives and nuts. And she showed me how to just plate this really simple cheese board, but it was the way that she did it. It was the presentation, it was so impressive. She goes, it's impressive and it's delicious and you could throw it together really quick. So that was the first time that I ever learned how to make a cheese board. Now here I am, I'm cheese gal. So I've been doing this a really long time. I love making cheese boards and I love showing people that they're very actually quite easy once you break it down in steps and learn this method. So back to the method, by the way. So we've already plated our cheese, our crackers, our meats, our bowls. Next, this is one of my favorite parts of making a board because this brings it to life. We're gonna throw on some fresh fruit. I've chosen just simple blueberries and blackberries. Again, I mentioned if you have grapes, use those. If you have strawberries, whatever fruit you have, this is the time to add it here. It adds um, color and texture and it's just a vibrance to the board. Also just uh, flavor wise, meat and cheese can be kind of heavy. So it's nice to have the element of like a brightness, right? Okay. So little piles of fruit all over your board. Again, going back to thinking symmetrically. I want like a little bit blue here, a little blue here, a little, does that make sense? We're adding some blackberries, creating little pockets. Don't have any empty space. There are no gaps on your board. So already I've got blackberries, blackberries, blackberries. And don't do like little tiny piles. You really want it. don't be afraid to load it up. Now we're going back in with more fruit. This time these gorgeous blueberries. And using that same technique that I just showed you, making little piles, we're gonna add in our beautiful blueberries. Eat one along the way. Mm. And you can already see the board starting to come to life here. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So next, we're adding in our dried cranberries. The same exact thing, same song and dance. We're just going in, adding little piles. Don't be afraid to layer. Okay, pistachios is what we're doing next. You can use any nut. I also love um, going, bringing it back home to Trader Joe's, my favorite place. <laughs> in the world next to Target, um, they have these truffle Marcona almonds that are, no, I really can't talk about them and get emotional. They're so delicious, but they were out of them or else I would have had those. Do you see how I'm going in here and I'm starting to close up any empty gap that you see? This is the last stage, the last layering process, closing up any empty gaps. And lastly, so go out to your herb garden, I don't have one because I um, kill every plant that enters my house. But if you have one, go out and clip some fresh herbs. It doesn't matter what you have. You could use um, fresh rosemary, thyme, oregano. I'm using mint. I love how vibrant 
and just, it also just smells so delicious. I'm gonna go around my plate. This is kind of like putting the bow on the present. Everything already looks so beautiful, but I'm taking it up a notch. Who was it? Imbral. He would go, bam, we're doing that to our plate, right? So it already looked good, already tasted good. Here we go. Little sprigs of green. I especially love hitting the plate with the um, little bit of green next to like the blackberries. I just think that looks gorgeous. I mean, can you deal? And that's it. That's all she wrote. Did you see how easy that was? It all goes back to breaking it down into steps. Layer one, let's go back over it. I feel like I'm a teacher. Level one, cheese. Two, crackers. Three, charcuterie meat. Or if you're, maybe you don't eat meat, just don't do that part at all. Um, next, fresh fruit. Then it's dried fruit, then it's nuts. And then you garnish. Super easy, super simple. This is great to serve at a party. You can do it ahead of time, wrap it up really good, throw it in the fridge for a couple hours beforehand, put it out 30 minutes before you serve it so that the cheese gets to room temp. And <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a masterpiece, really.